Fantastic. So this is good. I'm, I'm getting to know you. This is one of the great things about doing these interviews, getting to know people a bit deeper, mashallah. So tell us a little bit about Launch Good, because I'd love to hear about it in your own words. Like someone who's never heard of it, um, tell us what it's about. Um, what was the reason that you started it? I'm going to give you the long version. I don't give Please, this a yeah. lot of people. Good. That's but, what I want. Uh, I think that's the format we have here. <coughs> yeah. It really, you have to look back to why I even became Muslim. Um, so, so say there's kind of two parts to that. One part is the, the logical part, right? And seeing, uh, starting to study in the Quran, the history of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, yeah. the history of Islam. It's like all of that points to this really is, is a true religion. Um, or the, the true religion. The, the second part of it was the influence of Malcolm X. Mm. Uh, have you read the, his autobiography before? No, I haven't. Oh, man. You, but I've, you, I've, you've I've, got to. I know. I've seen the movie. I know that's really bad. But you've I seen the movie. That's why you say. <laughs> that's good. That's good. You know, that's like, okay, you story, see the movie. Yeah. It's, it's pretty good. But yeah. the, the book is really amazing. We had to read it for a class I took in school in 11th grade. Oh, okay. And I was so profoundly affected by Malcolm X. I mean, really, even to this day, like I think thousands of people become Muslim every year because of his story. Really? Um, and, and for me, one of the things that really stood out was this idea of legacy, like building a legacy of impact in the world. And I just, you know, so when I became Muslim, I was like, I want to be like Malcolm. And, and I used to have these dreams like, oh, what if we like bought a, a giant apartment and we converted it. It's so like first floor would be masjid, second floor would be gym, third floor would be school. You know, I have all these ideas. And very quickly, those ideas were squashed by the Muslim community. Um, uh, implicitly and explicitly. So implicitly, you could just see like how Muslims are always kind of fighting and arguing. And it's like, how, how could you ever do a big project like that if, if the community is not united? Yeah. Uh, and, and even explicitly, you know, when I had, you know, ideas like, oh, you know, could I work as like a director of Muslim? Like, I'm not going to be an imam. I'm not that yeah. guy, right? Yeah. Um, but I love serving the Muslim community. I loved, I loved working for the MSA. I, I think you call them ISOC, so yeah, you know, MSA right. yep. Association. I, I love serving the Muslims on campus. Um, but then it was just like everyone's like, well, that's not a career. You can't actually make a career out of that. You got an engineering degree at a top university. Like, you should go work into mm. corporate life. And it wasn't until I actually started working for life. Actually, I can do whatever I want in my life. You know, um, it may not be easy. It certainly wasn't easy for Malcolm. There was a lot of sacrifices, but I can do whatever I want. And just because uh, what I envision doesn't exist out there doesn't mean it can't be built. And so that was for me an important point with Launch Good is like, hey, I think we could actually build a company, a, a platform that unites Muslims. And inspires them to do really good work. And that was my inspiration for Launch Good. Um, I had seen Kickstarter uh, in my film days. We were the first, we ended up being the first Muslims to use Kickstarter, which is this creative uh, entrepreneurial crowdfunding platform that has really ignited imaginations in America and, 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 and now across the world. And I thought, you know, if we could do that globally with Muslims, just ignite imaginations, uh, empower them, make them feel like there's always something they can do, how cool would that be? And so that was the inspiration for Launch Good. Um, now, getting there is another story, but that, that was at least how, how we had the inspiration for it. Amazing. Wonderful. And, and this, is, this is really, really wonderful because you're saying that it came from a, a, like a deep sense of wanting to give that you were doing up the ISOX and, and the different places that you were really out there serving. And this is like your opportunity to do that on a much bigger scale, I guess, globally. Um, yeah. I, I usually ask people, like, who's a leader that inspired them? But I kind of feel like you, you've answered that question already, right? So t tell yeah, me, what welcome. was it about Malcolm X that really stood out? Because, uh, you know, there's so many different leaders that you study in school, right? What yeah. was it about him that stood out so much to you? Uh, perhaps above all, sincerity. Right? He was so sincere. Like, imagine, uh, so when he went to prison... Um, and he, he was not yet Muslim. He started meeting Muslims. Mm. He was given advice, which was, if you take one step towards Allah, Allah take, will take two steps towards you. And it was that passage in his autobiography that actually got me to quit eating pork and quit wow. you know, going to parties as an intention of getting close to Allah. Right? Oh. Um, and he was willing to throw away all of his previous life and radically transform his life uh, because of what he believed was the truth, uh, which at the time was the nation of Islam. 
And he'd really established himself in the nation of Islam. And then he started learning about Orthodox Islam. And he realized that like, that, was, that was actually more true. That was the real truth. Hmm. And again, he was willing to sacrifice everything, ultimately his life, to make that transition to Orthodox Islam. And, you know, he never died with a fortune. He never died with uh, knowing that his family had a, even a house to live in. You know, imagine that, right? Hmm. The, the sincerity he had in his life um, really inspired me. And, and uh, you know, I just pray that I can fall in his footsteps. Sure, I mean, that's wonderful. I've never, I've never thought about it, but you're right. That when he made that second change, that's when he had it all. The first one was when he was in prison. You know, you're down in the dumps. Yeah. Allah will help you. But the second one is that you're at the top and everyone in your community is fully behind you. And then yeah, that's amazing. That's really, really good. And, and, and that's why, you know, I mean, so many people also love his wife, his late wife, Betty Shabazz, and Allah have mercy on her too. I mean. Because it wasn't just his comforts he was sacrificing. It was her comforts, the kids' comforts. You know, I mean, it's mm. one thing to say, like, oh, I'm going to put myself in harm's way. It's, it's much more difficult to say, okay, I'm going to put my family in harm's way, my kids in harm's way.